Uh, hi everyone, I'm Jamie from Shopify, uh, and this is going to be a little bit of a different talk from m maybe the talks that you've heard here. Uh, I'm the lead of our engineering communications team, and I work very closely with our production engineers. Uh, many people, when they think of the idea of communications, can see it as fluff or maybe spin, which, to be honest, sometimes it is. But it also plays a vital role because it's the framework for how we as humans, as social creatures, interact and align. Uh, if you've ever been to a wedding and heard a very, very bad wedding speech, you can know how important good comms can be. Uh, and if you have a small team, a team that can fit inside of a meeting room or two, it's quite simple to get everyone on the same page. You can just have everyone around the table and you can all agree on something. But it becomes much harder as your teams get larger. The complexity grows exponentially, and you have to start intentionally baking in communications. I like to think of it as a lubricant, because it reduces friction and it increases speed for your ideas to go to completion. Uh, at Shopify, my team works to ensure that our fast-growing teams share knowledge, dispel confusion, and prevent siloing. And building a culture of communications helps our teams scale and become more resilient. So what does a culture of communication look like? Well, for us, it's a series of rituals and routines we've built to affirm a set of values around how we interact with one another. And here are six things that we're seeing from fostering this culture. It's a very GIF-heavy presentation. So the first one is it better cross-pollinates ideas. Our production engineers are spread across several continents. And even when we're all in the same office, siloing can occur. We can be on different floors, different teams. We aren't always speaking to one another. And that's why it's really important that four to five times a year, we bring everyone all together into the same event. We have summits and we have hack days, which is our internal hackathon. And what we're trying to do there is we're trying to nudge people into sharing, oh, I feel like I just got louder. Um, we're trying to nudge people into sharing approaches and experiences with one another. That's actually a great thing when people come from different backgrounds and have different approaches to things, and we get stronger when we talk together and we find new ways to approach the same problem. The next thing we do is we try to prevent duplicating mistakes. At Shopify, we like to say that we try to make every mistake unique. But again, when you've got people who are across many floors, many cities, many countries, not everyone is aware of mistakes being made. You're so focused on your own project, you don't always have time to listen to someone else and hear what's going on. So we've found two ways to try to correct for this. On a very casual level, in Slack, we're always there chatting with one another. And if someone's having a problem, that's the place to go, and everyone's very generous with their time to jump in and answer. It's very rare that you will jump into a Slack channel, ask a question, and not have an answer within 30 minutes. Someone is gonna be there for you, even if they don't know who you are, even if you're new to the company. That's something that I think is really great about our company. More formally, we are taking our RCAs and we're making a newsletter out of it. We are, in, we are interviewing the devs involved, we are talking about the incident, we're talking about how we solved it, and we're writing it up in a blog post or magazine style and sharing it across the org. We want to make sure that we've paid the admission, we've paid the price for that mistake, we want as much value for that mistake as possible and to share that lesson as broadly as possible. Next, we try to foster a growth mindset. So this is based off of the work of psychologist Carol Dweck, where she talks about a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And a growth mindset is the opportunity to improve, to learn, and to approach mastery. Whereas a fixed mindset says, what I've been given, what I can do right now is all I can ever do. And I don't think that's true of anyone whatsoever. It's actually sad to me that sometimes we approach life that way. What we want to do at our jobs uh, is to make sure that people can feel vulnerable enough to share their mistakes, be willing to admit it, and be willing to tell other people, because that's how we grow. If we have to hoard and try to, if we're scared that when we share a mistake that we're going to be judged, that people are going to call us out, that we're going to feel very bad, and that we have to try to, you know, we don't, we're going to become quiet because of all the shame, that's not going to help anybody, actually. Uh, and we also try to push ourselves to be better at 
facing that vulnerability. We have people talking at team level show and tells, so you can tell your peers what you're working on and get that feedback. Then we move you to a company-wide talk, so you tell everyone at Shopify what you're working on. And sometimes, you know, people have feedback. I mean, I've worked with enough devs. You all are a very opinionated bunch. You will let someone know if something isn't working. And then we move it to conferences. We always say, well, why don't you try telling it at this conference? Why don't you tell it at that conference to continue to share those stories and then be able to learn from other people as well? Because that's a great thing. If you come to me afterwards and say, I have these improvements for you for your talk, that helps me grow. I actually, I appreciate that. I want that. But you have to be at a company that says that that's okay to fail. All right, aid a greater sense of direction. This is all about context. This is all about building an understanding of what we're doing. So again, at the summits, we have state of the unions because as we continue to grow, as you continue to get bigger, it can be really hard to understand how your part of what you're doing fits into the greater goal. And when you don't have that, when you're missing that, there's a gap, it can be harder to feel engaged in the work that you do. So it's important to keep telling people what we're doing and why we're doing it. And at the pace that we add people to our company, you can't just do it once and then stop. So this is a, an argument that I have with devs all the time. They do one engineering talk in our company two years ago, and they go, I did it. I don't need to tell anyone else about it ever again. It's recorded. But think of everybody who's joined after you. And if they haven't taken the time to hear that talk, we're missing so much information. And then again, with the newsletters, the reason why we take the time to interview people, why we want to write it magazine style, is because we want to make it as engaging and interesting as possible and have enough details in there that you want to read it. I get so many emails, and so many of them I just send to archive because we are so busy, we don't have time to do it. But I tell my team all the time, we measure everything that we put out, every newsletter that we put out. We say, how many minutes is this gonna cost the company? We have 3,000 people at Shopify. If everyone takes five minutes to read it, that's 15,000 minutes. That is 250 company hours. Was this one thing that we sent out worth that amount of time? And we are seeing really high open rates for our newsletters, indicating that yes, people agree. All right, number five, understanding our strengths. There's a really interesting study, and this is something you can do whether or not in a production engineering or within your own life. When people tell the story of their own lives, they actually become more positive about what they're doing. That's a really interesting thing about storytelling, about narrativizing. After this conference, tell yourself the story of how this conference went. What happened? Who did you meet? What did you do? What did you really enjoy? And somehow, when we work it into a story, we actually see it more clearly. And this is why I'm such a big believer in stories. This is, stories are the way that, for generations, humans have talked to one another. So we tell stories so that we can underline our strengths. We tell it through blog posts. We tell it through newsletters. We tell it through conference presentations. When we turn our work into stories, we do a better job of actually knowing who we are, why we're doing what we're doing, and what we're good at. All right, the last one is really just a summation of all the other parts. It's an increased connection to work. I think all of us want to approach our work feeling that we bring meaning, that we bring value, that what we do matters, that we're seen. And sometimes, uh, if we're not communicating enough, that doesn't happen. It can feel like we're in a silo. Just having someone appreciate the work that we do or being able to see the response from people is really important. I wish I could give you a metric to tell you how much it matters, but that metric doesn't matter. It's really what's inside here. You can feel it when you connect with the work that you do. So hopefully, by building a culture of communication, you can make a stronger experience for everyone who works in your org. Thank you.